So hello and welcome to this video on the Bafaco Muck Slicer. Now the Muck Slicer is many things, it's a sequencer for pitch, it's a sequential switch where we can take 8 inputs to a common output, or 1 input to 8 different outputs. We can generate gates, we can manipulate polyrhythms by times in the kind of re-trigger or burst on each step. So if you want a quintuplet, which would be a burst of 5 just on step 4, you can have it by CV modulating this. We can clock divide both the input and the output clock, which is great if we just put a common clock we're using in from a patch. We divide it or multiply it to work at the rates we want to with Muck Slicer, but then we can divide or multiply that again for the clock out. Really useful feature. We can have this run or be CV addressable. We can start, stop, reset, or even just one shot play through this. We can tap tempo. We can take individual gate outs, we can take the all gate out, there's an end of cycle as well to chain other things or create an event such as trigger modulation at the end of it. It's a really powerful device. So to start with, we're going to use this as a sequencer. When there are no inputs present, these just control an internal voltage. So let's patch the common output out into the scope so we can see what's going on. This is going from the scope to an attenuator and a quantizer really common for an analog sequencer just to attenuate its level so we've still got the full range of control we want let's clock this externally turn on my oscillator i'm going to flick the switch to play let's punch in a sequence That will do for now. The next thing I'd like to do is take a gate output. So turning on the VCA in my synth voice just off screen, I'm going to take the all gates out. And it's this gate mode at the top that will control how many gates we have per step from zero to one, two, Three, right up to eight. So if I slow my clock down, speed this back up. And let's try and modulate this gate with an LFO. And this will become an attenuator. You can modulate this with another sequence. You can modulate it with its own sequence and become quite an advanced gate sequencer, which we will look at later in the video. Let's take a look at clock dividing the input. And to just demonstrate this division, I am going to trigger a different sound. So let's trigger a hi-hat in time with this. And this is my clock signal split externally. The signal that's coming to the clock in is triggering this hi-hat. And because I'm clocking this, the speed, divide or mult, becomes a divider or multiplier. And this is uh, Endless Rotary. Now let's take a look at the clock out. And I'm going to trigger a different sound for this as well. 
So taking the clock out, let's trigger a bass drum sound. And this is already set to divide four. We can see that rate next to the clock out on the LED. And to divide or multiply the clock out, we push the encoder down. So without pushing, we're dividing or multiplying. Notice the clock out doesn't change. It's nice that this doesn't link. So if we push, that's dividing, let's multiply. So that's dividing or multiplying the clock output. Now the play switch is a nice little momentary switch. When we flick this up, it starts or stops. When we flick it down, if it's playing, this is a reset. If it's not playing, it will trigger a one shot playthrough of the pattern. So because this isn't playing, it's stopped. This will be a one shot. If it is playing, Let's just change the sequence a bit. This is a reset. Now we do have an input for this control as well. So while this is playing, I can use this simply as a reset. So let's do that. I'm gonna use an LED cable so we can see when this pings the actual reset itself. If I stop this, this will now trigger a one-shot playthrough. And we can see that light up to show the signal coming in. But a nice trick that we can do by patching this internally is to change the step length. So if I set this playing again, and I patch an individual gate output, say step three, into this. It will reset and we'll get a three step sequence. Let's just move this cable out of the way so we can see a little bit better. Let's do five. If we stop it, we could trigger a one shot it's going to start cycling anyway. Get this play in. Let's try seven. Now another feature that works really well is we can turn run off and actually address this on its own. I'm just going to mute the hi-hat trigger by the clock in by splitting the signal and the bass drum from the clock out. Now this is just triggering because we've got gates set to trigger. We could use this address knob and its CV input to address this. I'm gonna turn on my scope because I have an LFO coming in. You can see that blue trace. I'm gonna use an LFO to address this. This is an attenuator for the LFO. And it's always going to be in sync with the clock. So however fast I make this LFO, a bit more random with audio rate signals, we can CV address the steps as well, rather than just have it run. Of course, turn that back to run. This is just going to run through. So for this second patch, we're going to look at the internal clocking, tap tempo, internal tempo control, which you can do on the encoder, and creating beats by using individual gate outs, manipulating the gates per step, and using the all gate out to trigger this hi-hat you can hear in the background to give us a common rhythm that we can hear running through the pattern. We can tap tempo, pushing the encoder,
This still becomes a global tempo control when we turn it. Now I'm going to use individual outs just to trigger some of the sounds. Here's a snare, let's say on step five. Kick on one. Let's add some more sounds as well. Let's say a snare. Let's ping a little FM filter. And a rim shot on free. So, nice simple pattern. I'm going to externally clock some modulation which is going to be sample and hold. I'm going to offset and attenuate this sample and hold externally because I just want to make sure I've got the control that I want and plug into this gate mode and use this as an attenuator. Now let's add some sample and hold to create some little nice ratchets and bursts. And those negative values in my modulation are actually pulling this down to having no gates on that step as well. I'm still not using the switching, either the inputs to a common output or the input to all the different outputs. So we could use this to create a sequence, which you can see if I plug directly into data, So I could still be sequencing something else externally as well. But this becomes much more fun when we patch this internally and create our own unique advanced gate sequencer. So I'm going to take these out. I'm going to mute some of my sounds. I'm actually going to patch the sequence back on itself into here. Turning this up full, we can turn these sliders to a point where we'll just get the single gate per step again. So we can sequence our own ratchets and bursts internally or re-triggers of these steps. Say so I want to turn off four. Burst seven. Now this works on the all gate output, which is triggering the hi-hat, but it will also work on these individual outputs. So let's bring in my other sounds again. See these snares at the end? Let's burst the kick. We have an advanced gate sequencer right in there if we're not using this switching and we want to use itself to modulate its own gates. So here we're going to use Muck Slicer as a sequential switch. I'm clocking the unit, have a bass drum playing that is just there to serve as a kind of tempo reference. Now I'm using the all input and I've tried to match the cables that are coming into the muck slicer to the colors on the Mordax data. So this purple trace, which is a little harder to see, is a triangle wave. That's going to the all input and then taking the common output, which is the yellow trace, that's then going into a VCA and I'm using the gate output to open and close this VCA. So if I turn up every step, We can see a triangle wave passes through. 
Now, if that was just on one of the actual steps, that wouldn't be there on every single step along the muck slicer. But we could just use these for volume control. I'm going to leave these up, but because I'm using the all input, this takes this triangle to all eight inputs, and I'm using the common I.O. as an output in this case. Let's break some of this normaling and put some extra waves in there and create a little sequence that changes waveform as it goes. This blue trace is a wave folded sign. I have a saw wave on this green trace and green cable. We can see the output is changing. Now I can't fit everything on the scope, but I'm going to put a chord sound in here as well. And let's hear some noise on the very last step. So the triangle from the all in is still going to steps one, three, five, and six. The others have their own inputs. So this is an eight-way sequential switch. I could still control them with this level control, the sliders. I'll just leave them up. I'm going to leave them up for now. Now, because I'm taking the gate output, I could just take the clock out, divide that to whatever I want, and trigger my sequence. Or I could just obviously leave this VCA wide open, which is what's coming out of the muck slicer now. But it's more likely that I would trigger this with something. We can still modulate the amount of gates per step. That's pretty cool. So it's way more than a basic sequential switch. Eight inputs with a common input that saves some cabling using multiples or stack cables. Level control over these as well. Gate generation, the rhythms on top, and we could still use this reset input to create less than eight stages of switching. Say we want four. Now what's really cool there is, because there isn't always a gate firing on step four, it is sometimes going through. So we're getting quite advanced in terms of what this is actually doing. If I take this CV out, can just reset normally. So we want a free step. Five. It's really easy to do. But modulating that was really cool. Let's do that again. Now again, I'm going to patch far back on itself to reset, but every other time it comes around, there's no gate, so it isn't going to reset every cycle. So for this patch, I've zoomed out to show you a bit more of what's going on. Now I'm using the switch in the completely opposite way this time. I have a common input, which is this green cable, and that's this LFO that you can see flashing around, wobbler. That is then going out as it switches to four different destinations. Now I have four different oscillators going into the hex mix VCA, I'm using the hex mix and hexpander as I always do. And these sounds, if I pull, 
those sounds are tuned to a chord I'm then routing this LFO to the CV inputs of the VCA mixing them together these are going out to a reverb you can hear some droning going on as well I'm also using the clock output which I've divided up to a different time from the clock that is coming in just to have a hi-hat the reason that I'm clocking this rather than using it internally is this LFO is clocked with this sequencer so by getting Muck Slicer in time I can have a definite amount of LFO wobbles per step I'm also using the gate out and modulating the gate mode for a little kick drum. Now these voices are panned in stereo along the hex mix. So let's just have a play around with Muck Slicer and route these signals a little bit differently. And I want to reset it as well. So we can route one CV out to several destinations, or it could be audio, or like I did just earlier in the video, route several audio signals to a single out. So for this final patch, we're going to look at using the one-shot mode like an envelope generator. Have a wave folding oscillator that's currently droning. Here's what the fold will sound like. The output is coming into data, out of data into Rampage, which I'm using as a slew generator. If you'd like to see how to do that and more with Rampage, check out the video link in the description. Rampage is fantastic. And the slewed output is coming back up on the blue trace on data so we can see what's going on. Let's see and hear the patch. <laughs> So it's one shotting through these eight steps. They are stepped, we can see that, and we can see that I don't have any slew on it either. Now if I add some falling slew, when the voltage is coming down, that's then going to curve. If I add some positive slew as well, an even amount of both. I'm starting to get more unique style envelope shapes. Now this isn't an envelope generator but we can use it like one. So let's try and mimic a rise and a decay and then a sustain. So we've kind of got attack, decay, sustain, release. Just add a little bit more slew. Now the rate of this envelope is just set by the tempo. Drop my slew a little bit, now I've sped this up. Slow it down. Bring the slew up. A bit more. It's quite a nice, unique way to work by slewing the output, one shotting it, and using that as a smooth envelope like modulation. Now, the manual for Muck Slicer is great, and we can change some of the behaviors which are outlined in that manual should you wish. You can do a few different things, and there's some patch examples as well. I will link the manual and the website below. Thanks for watching this video on the Muck Slicer. Check out the Rampage video below, as well as the Hex Mix, Hex Spander, and Hex Mix VCA. Watch out for a burst video, the other new Bufaco module coming very soon. Hit like, subscribe, go support me on Patreon if you'd like to support this work and the bonuses and exclusive content that you can access over there. Cheers for watching.